Hey, how's it going, everybody? Hey, guys. Thanks for uh, sitting in on our live webinar. I'm Jason here at RoofSnap. And I'm Katrina. And uh, we are looking forward to showing you how to uh, measure roofs in RoofSnap today. We're going to start off with uh, some sketching basics. Now, Katrina, if I understand correctly, today uh, we're, we're going to look at uh, drawing a roof using a, uh, a drone image. Is that, is that happening today or is that tomorrow? Yeah, I think we're going to use drone imagery today. We're going to use drone imagery today? Excellent. Yeah. That's, uh, that's what I was hoping for. So as uh, some of you may or may not know, uh, here in RoofSnap, you can measure roofs uh, from integrated imagery that we have uh, connected right to RoofSnap. So that would be Google's imagery. Uh, or Apple's imagery, uh, and to give you a little peek at what Apple's imagery look, what Apple's imagery looks like, I'm going to tap here on the project map. Project map will zoom in to our GPS location, but before it zooms in all the way, we can take a look at the map overall, and all of these pins uh, represent the addresses where we've created projects. Uh, you can see I, I demo all around, uh, and actually, not all of my pins have finished loading in yet, they'll, uh, they'll trickle. I did a, uh, a reinstall the other day. Um, but if we tap on Find My Location at the top, it's going to zoom in here to our physical location in Columbus, Ohio. You can see this little neighborhood where we've drawn a few roofs and all the pins here. But this uh, Apple 3D imagery, this is one of the imagery sources that we integrate with. So you don't, uh, you know, you don't always necessarily need to pull out the drone. But I'll tell you, back when I was still selling um, and meeting with residential customers and commercial customers, uh, I would take the drone out, one, because it was the best way to get a high-resolution image, uh, but two, it really wowed the customer. It really uh, uh, brought them outside, especially when the weather was nice, um, created some rapport uh, between me and the customer. Uh, it was just a, a wow factor. Uh, that added a, a you know a real sense of professionalism to the whole sales process and the inspection process. Uh, so while it may not be the quickest way to get your imagery to use in RoofSnap, uh, it definitely is uh, something that the customer will typically enjoy. Why don't we uh, pop out of the video for a second and uh, just uh, put some faces uh, here to uh, to our names. <laughs> Hi, um, for I'm any Katrina. of you, who, yeah, this is Katrina. <laughs> I'm Jason. Uh, for any of you who've been to uh, the uh, International Roofing Expo, you may have met us there. Um, we were also at the Win the Storm conference in Miami. Mm -hmm. um, we'll be going to more and more trade shows here throughout, uh, you know, the upcoming months and uh, and years. So, if you're members of the NRCA, uh, you know, get out to your, uh, you know, your local roofing trade shows when they come to your areas um, for the regional trade shows. Uh, you may, you may find us at some of those. Uh, and additionally, um, <clears throat> well, the one coming up in June in Columbus, I think, will be the next one that we'll be at. So, Great. hopefully, we'll see you in person. Yep. Oh, wow. Well, let's hop back over into uh, into the app. Um, what we're going to do is uh, show you how to start a new project uh, importing a drone image. So that was the project map. I'm going to go here to the tile on the main screen called Start New Project. I'm going to put it into our RoofSnap demo office. And uh, we'll just give it a name, uh, Sample Drone Project. And of course, when you use a Bluetooth keyboard connected to your iPad, like I do, uh, sometimes the space bar doesn't uh, space properly. And for a, uh, you know, for a drone image, we don't necessarily need to put in an address uh, because we're not using uh, the search uh, function but uh, as to, to pull up an aerial image. But if we want to view any of the supplementary imagery, uh, we will need an address. Uh, God knows I have no idea what the actual address is of the drone image we're going to use today. Uh, but it's a buddy of mine's house up in Dublin, Ohio, really close to the Muirfield Golf Course. Uh, so let's uh, actually, yeah, let's just go to his house and, uh, and drop a pin on it. How do you feel about that? I feel good about that. Let's get, uh, get the right address here. Yep. So we're going to run up here to Dublin. Hopefully he doesn't mind that I give the whole world directions to his house, but I won't say who he is. 
Um, if we go up, sawmill. Oh, uh, this might be harder than I think. Anybody see there? Wait, where's the golf course? Am I up too high? Hard road, bright road. There's sawmill. Yeah, there's sawmill. You don't have to go up very far. You gotta go up Dublin Road. There it is, Muirfield. Oh look, there's already a pin. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so one of the ways that you can just start and pull in an address, uh, for you who, uh, who've used RootSnap before, you may know that uh, if you press and hold on a house, you can drop a pin. Now, we, we pressed a little too close to the existing pin, but we can drop a second pin on the same address. Let's just try out here by the street. There we go. And how convenient is that? It pulls in the address information for us automatically. We do have to change the office and we'll give it a new name. We'll just call this Demo Drone. Tap on Done in the upper right-hand corner. Now we have a created project, and we're looking at the details of this project. Uh, jumping straight into the roof snap, here's where we create the sketch of the roof. Now you're going to see immediately Google Satellite imagery is going to load by default for that house. <coughs> If we change map type, we can see what Apple Flyover has to offer for this location. And we can also load near map. Most of the time, if you're in an area like Dublin, um, you might just use the uh, Apple imagery or the uh, near map imagery. But as I said before, when you really want to wow the customer or uh, when you want to use uh, your own drone image because you're in a, in a rural location, you know, these, these uh, map um, these map makers, these imagery providers, uh, you know, they capture imagery based on population density. Uh, so if you're out in a more rural location, you're not going to have you're not going to have a good near map image or a good Apple image. So when you need to import uh, your drone image, uh, first of all, you're going to have saved your image uh, of the roof into your photos library, and you'll see here I actually have my DJI import folder with a couple uh, drone images in here. Uh, and this is the one here on the left that we're going to draw today. Now, it's important that you take this image um, from at least 400 feet. Uh, I believe that is currently what the FAA allows. Uh, you want to make sure that the image is nice and straight before you import it in here into RoofSnap. Um, but the goal is uh, the higher the better. Um, you'll notice even the rakes here are at a, still at a slight distorted line. Um, and again, that has to do with um, the angle, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, well, the size of the lens, the size of the lens on the drone camera and how it can distort the image if you're too close to the roof. So you want to get pretty far away, uh, as high as possible, uh, as high as you know, the law allows. So what do you think here, Katrina? We're going to go ahead and uh, snap and start drawing on this. I feel like uh, I feel like there I'm zoomed in sufficiently. Mm -hmm. Let's lock that image in. Now, the first thing that you have to do is draw a line that reflects a known distance. And we're getting a sink here, so we're going to wait for the sink. But what this uh, what this drawing of this first line does is it sets the scale for every other line drawn on the roof. That being said, you can't draw a non-horizontal line. So if I draw this rake and give it a measurement, that doesn't help me with the scale unless I'm drawing the true length of the, uh, you know, of the base of the house to the center. Uh, so what I mean to really say here is you want to draw a gutter line or a ridge line where you know the measurement, where you were either able to capture it while you were on the roof or capture it, um, you know, maybe using a wheel from the ground or a 100-foot tape measure or something like that. So if I remember right, I believe that this measurement is about 45 feet long. So we'll tap in that, we'll type, or we'll tap OK. And then up here in the upper left-hand corner, there's an Accept button. And when we hit Accept, that's going to lock in uh, that measurement as our scale. Now, what if uh, what if we've got some 
inches that we need to account for. How do we put that in when we're uh, when we're entering in that distance of a known line? Well, you should have asked me that before I saved it. <laughs> <laughs> You're too quick for me. But uh, well. And, th and that's okay because it's going to show us uh, another function here that you can do within any roof snap project. When we go into settings in the upper left hand corner, we can always override the map scale. And it takes us back into the same process uh, that we just did to set the scale for this image. So, uh, roof snap, uh, this data entry field is not in feet and inches, it's in a decimal. So if it's uh, 47 feet, 6 inches, that's going to be 47.5. Um, so take your number of inches, divide it by 12, get a decimal point, add that to the number of feet, and that's how you're, you'll enter in the measurement. So uh, let's make it uh, uh, 47.25. Uh, that would be uh, 3 inches. Perfect. Awesome. <laughs> Tap OK. Oh, by the way, if you need to pan and if you need to zoom in uh, on the drawing in order to uh, draw a different line or get closer to the line that you're drawing, you can switch between zoom and pan and draw on the upper left. But once you're all said and done, just tap on the accept button. Now we jump back into Roof Snap and we have set a new scale for the lines of this roof. Now this one's a little difficult. Uh, I remember this being a, an intricate roof and I haven't drawn it in a while, so uh, let's see if I can get it right the first time. What I've done here is um, whenever you're going to start drawing a new line, you place your finger on the roof and in order to start that line, you have to tap the screen and I always compare it to a mouse click. So with my other hand, I'm going to use my left thumb and I'm going to tap just below where my cursor is. When I tap the screen, it turns green, my cursor. And when I draw out the line, you see when I come to connect to that other line, it turns to a large red circle. Now, it's not just going to lock into it automatically. If I move my finger, it jumps off. But if I hold it there and tap the screen, it's going to lock right onto that spot. Now I have connected those two lines together. Down here, this line was a little crooked. So I'm going to put my cursor on it and leave it there for a couple seconds and it picks it right back up. From there, uh, I, haven't, I haven't picked up my finger yet, but if I tap on the screen again, I can draw the line out and connect it to the uh, edge of that other line at the bottom, there at the eave. And I am drawing this roof in a little bit of a haphazard manner. I think Katrina would just go, you know, from, from uh, you know, uh, clockwise, starting in the upper left-hand corner, <laughs> but I just want to show you guys that you know, you can draw it in any order. Roof Snap is, is smart enough to, um, you know, pick up the facets, even if you uh, just can draw. You know, sometimes I start by just drawing what I can see. I can't always see every single line at the beginning. So, you know, I'm going to draw on that ridge because I can see that one nice and straight. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw on this rake and uh, come across the eave and then come up the valley. and then come right down the valley on the other side. Now you'll notice that I'll switch from the draw button to the pan and zoom button quite frequently, uh, especially on a roof like this. You know, I really want to zoom in and get the details of how these different, uh, these different facets overlap. So I'm going to bring this, uh, bring this point back a little bit. I typically like to draw to the center of the gutters. And I may have overdrawn that ridge by just a little bit, so let's bring that back uh, here. And then down on the other side. And here's where this roof does get a little tricky. <coughs> so again, I like to draw lines that I, that I can see clearly. So I know that the valley comes up into a wall there. So we'll draw that wall out. I know that wall is going to turn and go up as step wall. So we'll just draw that there for now. And then I also see that the rake here, or excuse me, the eave here of this lower section is going to go past the overhang of the roof line above. It's going to come up the rake to the ridge.
if I'm not mistaken, I think that that rake comes all the way down to where the ridge meets. Which means the step wall follows up the rake and it's gonna connect in the little pocket right there at the bottom of the, uh, where the rake meets the ridge. And it means that this little step wall is gonna go all the way up and connect in this other little pocket where this valley meets the lower E. I hope you all can see that. If any of you have any trouble drawing these complex uh, uh, roof details, just know that uh, you know we do have our Sketcho service. <laughs> so we can always draw it for you and upload it into your account. Um, but we also, you know, we do a lot of, we do a lot of training. We, uh, we, we take a lot of phone calls. Uh, we're more than happy to help you uh, get through some of these more difficult uh, roof drawings, at least, uh, you know, during some training time. There we go. And if I remember right, Katrina, the back section of this roof has another really interesting uh, architectural detail. So we're just going to draw right through that chimney. I typically don't draw around them because uh, we have pins. We have pins to label up the chimney and account for, uh, you know, when we, when we estimate it to account for any information there. So that valley goes past. Remember, we're going to always pay attention to draw in the overhangs. I'm going to bypass that area for just one second and draw in the rakes first because you see we do have a little bit of distortion here. And I know from memory that uh, this ridge actually connects to the corner of this step wall with a little piece of rake that you can't quite see in this overhead image, but trust me, it's there. That's the advantage of flying a drone on site. You get a real sense of what's going on uh, on the roof when you're there flying. Uh, you can attach, uh, again, pins with notes and photos on little details if you need uh, little reminders of what's going on architecturally on the roof. Yeah, I mean, you'll never, you'll never have better um, success with drawing accurately than if you're uh, you know, right on site and having just flown the roof. Uh, you know, with a drone, capturing that kind of imagery, uh, it, it just doesn't get any sharper than that. All right, now, um, I guess it's, uh, it's, uh, it's time for the truth of the matter here. Let's tap on the facets button. Uh, if, if you've seen any of our other videos, you know when we hit facets, it will highlight all of the roof sections that we've drawn and closed in uh, accurately. Uh, we're also seeing the overhangs um, double highlighted. And I've got a zero for each facet that I've drawn, so I'm thinking that I'm good. Uh, I want to test a couple of these facets and see what they go to. So I'm going to use the remove tool for that. I tap on this little zero here. Oh, and that's perfect, because that is a continuous slope all the way down. And then this zero here, it's right in the middle of this front facing gable, but I'm pretty sure, yeah, it's just this outer slope. Great. Well, now I wanna go to the lines tool and label up all these lines. Um, I always start with eaves, but I wanna show you that if you tap on eaves a second time, you can add additional, what we call sub line labels. So eave edge is a designation for your drip edge metal. Uh, but can also be a designation for any other product that you put in the eVeg category. Uh, so people were asking me lately, you know, what else might be assigned to eVeg? Um, edge vent. Um, uh, I believe that um, one of the popular brands is called Smart Vent. I used to sell that back in the day. Um, you might apply your Smart Vent to the eVeg subline label. Uh, then we can also add gutters and gutter toppers and ice and water shield. Uh, so for this one, I'm just going to add all the line labels. Put gutters, gutter guard, drip edge, and uh, <clears throat> what did I miss? Gutter toppers, mm -hmm. ice and water shield. I'm going to put all the line labels on this, uh, this round. So let's go back out to rakes. 
And uh, I don't know anybody who installs ice and water shield at the rake edge, um, perhaps in uh, uh, more snowy, icy uh, areas. Columbus doesn't get that much. Uh, but let's put it on just for the sake of uh, this demonstration here. And you notice I'm being careful to tap on my rakes and not accidentally tap on those step walls that run parallel to the rakes. You get them all? Oh, there's so. a little one right there. There's a little eve right there. I'll have to come back to that. <laughs> it's too close. Uh, sometimes I just know when it's too close. Uh, under ridge vent, we have the subline label, um, excuse me, under ridges, we have the subline label ridge vent. And I'm going to add ridge vent and the ridge line label to all of the ridges of the roof. Uh, hips. Nope, we don't have any hips on this roof, so let's skip that and jump right down to valleys, and let's add ice and water shield in all the valleys. All right. Now, as Katrina mentioned, I missed an eave here, and it was so close to that um, step and wall uh, line that we haven't labeled yet. So let's start with step. I'm going to add step flashing and ice and water shield to these, uh, to these lines for step. And then I'm going to jump here to wall. Uh, and let's add line labels for ice and water shield and apron flashing. I'm going to go back to the eave. Now, here's something that's uh, really good to see here. When we go back and select a previously selected line, all the sub-labels that we had loaded in and used before stay in there, so we don't have to go in and select them again. So when we tap on eaves, we're getting all the line labels for eaves. We have a few more step walls here, so we'll go back to step, label those, and then here we have a roof-to-wall flashing where there would be apron metal. And this little guy right here is, in fact, a rake edge that turns left and go, goes downhill towards the valley as a step wall. And once it hits that valley, it turns into a horizontal roof-to-wall flashing where there would be apron metal. There we go. So everything is still currently uh, labeled as a 0-12 pitch, Katrina. And, uh, what does that do to our valleys and our rakes and our hips and our step walls when everything is still at a zero twelve? Well, let's take a look at some of those measurements. Okay. Um, oh boy. Um, there's a step wall that says it's nine point one feet. At a zero twelve, though, is that going to be an accurate measurement? No, it's not. We need to add in some pitch values so that the app can accommodate for the slope of the roof, and it's going to change that measurement. We'll see that when we assign pitch. Got it. So if I remember right, I believe that every slope on this roof is a 712. And so what I've done here is gone to the facets uh, button, tapped on pitch, selected my 712, tapped on apply to all, and that's going to put 712 on every slope of the roof. Now, if we needed to change, uh, say, this one and this one to 512, we could go right back in to pitch, select 512, and then just tap on the 7. You'll see it toggles to 0. We tap on it again, and it toggles to 5. Same thing with the one below. But I do want to leave them both as 7, so I'm going to switch back to 7, tap on them again. They always toggle between 0 and the newly selected pitch value. Now when we zoom in on that step wall, we'll see it has increased in length. Not sure if you guys can see it very well on your screen, but it's, uh, it's now gone from what I believe was 9.1 up to uh, 10.6 feet long, uh, increasing in length uh, based on the pitch of the slope. There we go. Well, I think this is the uh, the best I've ever drawn this roof. I think so too. It's pretty <laughs> impressive. I'm glad we got this on camera. Yeah, right. <laughs> Never again. Um, you know, because this is a drone image, we can see so many accessories. Uh, I really want to go in here and try to label up these accessories correctly. So, 
pins is an area where we uh, where we have all of the different accessories. Uh, again, this is just a demo account, so it doesn't have every accessory uh, that you personally would want to use. Uh, what I mean by that is these categories can be customized. You can change them, add additional categories, and add more products and pins within these categories uh, as you see fit. So let's start with an inspection pin. Let's say the customer called us out because they had a leak, and uh, we got up on the roof, and we... Uh, we uh, determined that there was a leak in this front valley dormer cable section area. <laughs> <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> so I uh, so let, go to this. I go to the um, inspection pins. I grabbed that uh, that leak area pin. I tapped on the roof to drop that pin, and then when I go back and press and hold, I can take a photo. And I'm going to take a photo of my coffee. But if you had your iPad right up on the roof, there we go. I went to Andorra, which is near Spain, last year. So I got a coffee mug from Andorra. There we go. I don't know what I was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I got distracted by Andorra. It's a really great place. They have slate roofs. All of the construction in Andorra is made out of slate. The walls, the roofs, it's beautiful. It's like, uh, it's like you're in an old Victorian mountain village. Mm, that sounds wonderful. It's really crazy. Um, so we pinned on uh, a copy of my, uh, an image of my coffee mug. If we press and hold on the pin again, we can add some notes. So let's say that that was a, a leak that we had taken, a real image uh, in the valley, uh, and there were some uh, damaged shingles there. So we might leave a note here talking about um, uh, damage to... Uh, the shingles in the valley. Please pardon my keyboard. It just adds periods every every time. I, uh, there is no save button in case you were wondering. You just tap off the screen there and uh, the dialog box goes away. Now let's go back to some more of our pins. Uh, I want to address the plumbing boots on the roof so let me open up that category. And these are residential size uh, uh, plumbing boots, so we're going to grab the one inch to three inch and tap here and here. And I believe there's just two on this uh, on this roof. Uh, chimney flashing. There is a large chimney on this roof, so let's add this uh, chimney flashing kit. I'm going to tap in this gray section here to make that window slide over. And I'm going to tap right there on the chimney to add that pin. Now, See, I must have bumped the uh, screen up here. I accidentally added uh, an extra pin. So I'm going to delete that. Oh, I'm going to delete both of those little guys off. Just by pressing and holding yep. and deleting that. Pressing and holding, open up the uh, dialog box there. It's kind of the Apple way. You'll get, uh, you'll get used to some of the things that, uh, that uh, Apple has you do here. Um, we have a skylight. So let's say they want to replace... Um, the standard deck mount skylight here. I'm going to go ahead and grab that pin, tap it on the roof, and there we go. That should be all the accessories that I can see there on the roof. I like to go back to facets and double check, make sure we have sevens all across the board, uh, and then we're done. So let's go ahead and tap on the done button in the upper right hand corner. Now somehow I just managed to spend like 23 minutes drawing out this roof. Uh, and for some of you, you might be watching this demo going, you know, by the time I get my drone out and I fly it, uh, take the image and land it, uh, you know, that's 10 minutes. And then am I going to sit in my truck and spend another 20 minutes drawing out the roof? Well, you know, the first time you draw on roof snap, it might take you 20 minutes to draw the first roof. Um, but I can do that roof in six minutes. I just like to talk a lot and describe <laughs> every mundane uh, action that we're doing here. But, you know, I want to be clear. I want to make sure that, uh, you know, we leave you with as few questions as possible. That being said, uh, Katrina, what do, you, what do you have to say here about this suggested shingle cutting waste? So, uh, so this cut waste calculator is based on uh, a couple of things here. Uh, the linear feet of valley, hip, rake, and step and then uh, an overall handling waste 
uh, based on the total square of the roof here. So it's an algorithm that's, uh, that we made uh, that will automatically calculate this for you and produce a suggested cutting waste for this particular roof. Now this doesn't include hip and ridge or starter, um, so you will need to account for that separately. But uh, when installing architectural shingles, we find this to be uh, pretty accurate. Yep. It's very consistent with um, the cut waste calculator uh, that some of the insurance adjusters will use in Xactimate. Um, it is taking into account, as Katrina said, uh, the relationship between um, the overall size of the roof, uh, the lengths of all these lines, and the number of facets. Uh, uh, the number of facets in relationship to the size of the roof is uh, what's uh, creating the complexity uh, of the roof, which uh, impacts that handling waste, that 3% handling waste there. Um, the hip and ridge cap, as Katrina said, it's not being accounted for here in this cut waste. Um, and it is accounted for, uh, but actually it will be accounted for automatically within roof snap once we move into the estimating side of things. So for our purposes today, I'm going to go ahead and say yes and use the 9.99% suggested shingle cut waste. But instantly jump down here into measurements. And we see that the waste percentage has been set at 9.99. If, uh, you know, this is insurance related, uh, that roof, you probably could negotiate up to a 15% waste factor with an insurance adjuster. Now that's good for you. That's gonna, you know, that's gonna um, raise your margins on the job a little bit. But when it actually comes to producing um, that roof, you, you will likely have right around the 10% waste factor uh, when it comes to your production quantities on the uh, amount of shingles and squares that you're going to need to take out with you. So just keep that in mind. You can scroll down through the measurements page here uh, and see all of the different information based on all the lines that we've labeled and all of the sublines that we've labeled. Sublines are going to give us these category measurements. It's quantified the total amount of ice and water shield we need and ridge vent and step flashing and gutters and, and, and everything. If we're going to be estimating gutters and downspouts, though, since downspouts are a, a, a measurement that we can't get from a top-down view, uh, that has to be entered in manually. So let's just go ahead and say there's uh, 200 linear feet of downspouts needed for this job. Uh, some companies are going to apply starter at the eaves only. Some are going to apply starter um, at the eaves and the rakes. So you have this little button here to make that decision. Uh, for the calculation purposes. We also get some interesting information up here in the upper right hand corner. We can see the total number of facets, the total number of lines or edges in the drawing. Uh, and then all of the information that we have both on the details page and here on the measure, measure, meh, meh, measurements page of the project. <laughs> we like to have fun. Yeah, right? <laughs> can be uh, exported as a CSV file. Um, any of you who use, um, what is it, QuickBooks or mm -hmm. Acculinks or uh, many other software programs, uh, you probably know that you can import CSV files uh, in order to uh, upload large amounts of data without having to enter it in one line item at a time. So how about we take a look at all of these measurements, uh, Katrina, in a nice fancy PDF report? I think that sounds great. Let's All hop right. down to uh, documents. Let's do it. And we're going to generate a new sketch report. I'm going to see what this stuff looks like uh, in a PDF. So we'll tap on generate new beneath sketch reports. And uh, you know, it typically doesn't take very long. A couple uh, spins of the wheel here for generating a document. This document gets generated uh, both on your, you know, on your device and saved to your device, but also in our cloud server. So it's always available to you online here through RoofSnap. Document, uh, imagine your company logo has been uploaded and is now appearing in the upper right hand corner. And on this report, uh, since we used a drone image, um, that drone image is the only image we're going to see. This, the north, south, east, west aspect images that we typically get from Bing are not loaded in because we never provided them an address. Pitch breakdown of the roof. 
And then all of our line measurements and subline labels and everything appear on this document, followed by um, the, uh, the, 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 the line measurements and category measurements and squares, all totaled up uh, for your estimating needs. As we continue on, we'll also see a breakdown of each facet by squares. And then a map location of all of the pins that we placed on the roof. Followed by photos and notes uh, that we've attached to all the various pins. Uh, so for this one, we only added one photo and one notes to the first pin, the leak area pin. But we could have added photos and notes to every pin that we placed on the roof, uh, giving as much inspection detail as we need. This is really convenient you know, for crews and for production managers to have this information provided on the front end uh, directly by the salesman or the inspector. And this could be pages and pages long, depending on how many notes and photos you attach to the roof. In the right corner here, we have the share button. And this is uh, the way of uh, giving you uh, the ability to send that PDF uh, via email. So you could open it up in one of your email clients. You could save it to your company Dropbox in Google Drive or uh, even open it in a PDF uh, document editor like PDF Expert or uh, you know, one of the other products or send it to your printer as well. All right, so we have been talking for about a half hour, a little more. <laughs> My throat's getting sore. Um, <laughs> Katrina, do you think it makes sense to um, go in quickly and, and build like a good, better, best style estimate or? Um, yeah, let's show them, uh, show them here how, uh, how kind of quick and easy we can throw in uh, a couple of pre-made templates that we made okay. uh, to go in and, and push out a, a good, better, best estimate using these measurements from this project. Yeah, and then maybe tomorrow we'll go in and build a custom estimate using one product at a time. How about we do that? I think that's great. Okay, great. So we're going to turn these measurements better best style estimate using some templates that we've built. You know what, tomorrow we should talk about how to build templates too. I That's not we something we, we've dove into. So tomorrow we'll also uh, show you how to build some of these templates that we're going to demonstrate right now. So before I add a template, I want to point out that our steep charges, because in this demo office we have steep charges uh, defined and set up with real pricing, and then those pins that we put on the roof, the skylight, the chimney, the plumbing boots, uh, they have pricing, labor and material costs associated with them that we've set up online on our website. Um, this is customizable for each individual account. So you can set your own labor and material price for all of your accessories and all of your materials. I'm going to jump into the add material here real quick. And I want to show you these are all of the different material categories we have remove and dispose. Roof decking, ice and water shield, fasteners, starter shingles, valleys, and so forth and so on. But what we've done is we've taken the most common items that you use on every roof over and over again, your shingles, your felt, your nails, your ice and water shield, your hip and ridge, uh, all that stuff, and we've combined them into uh, the different templates that we're about ready to load in. So let's go back to the estimate items here. And in the bottom left-hand corner, we have a folder. And here I've created uh, several different uh, good, better, best templates for various different manufacturers. Um, you know, let's let's actually not do the good, better, best. Let's do the better, best designer. Ooh, all right. I think that's fancy. I think that's where people are going these days. You know, we find fewer and fewer people uh, installing three tap shingles. So let's start with. Um, the GAF Timberline HD. Now after that first template loads, we just tap right back into specifications. And it's always going to ask us to select a color for any color option material that we have in our estimate. So as we can see, we've got the deck armor and uh, the GAF weather watch. Uh, this is just how I decided to customize this template. You may use different 
products and so forth with, within your template. But we've got the GF Pro Start Starter, and then of course the shingle with the little I button here at the right. So if we decide to change the color later on, we just tap that little I button and we can go back in and reselect a new color. Now let's go ahead and add in two more. And let's just stick with GAF for today. Tomorrow we'll use uh, certain teed and on Thursday we'll jump back to Owens Corning. That's right, impartial. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So the best uh, might be in GAF's uh, uh, product offerings would possibly be their armor shield impact resistant uh, product. So let's grab that. And now I'm going to tap on it to highlight it. And now the, uh, again, the color, the, uh, the color selection here pops up. So let's go with um, slate. And we can scroll down and see that, uh, you know, for the most part, the accessories are the same, uh, except we have the Armor Shield Sealer Ridge, impact resistant hip and ridge product. Um, yeah, I think that's the only difference between those two templates is the hip and ridge and the shingle itself. And the price, of course. Now let's add one of uh, GAF's designer products. So I've put in the slate line, which uh, is probably, in fact, one of my favorite shingles. We have a neighborhood here in Columbus called Victorian Village, um, covered with slate line shingles uh, to mimic the look of real slate. And it's just a very handsome product. I'm a big fan. We uh, tapped on the slate line to highlight it. And it, uh, again, asks us to pick a color. So let's go with uh, English gray. Or maybe that Victorian, well, no, not the Victorian red. <laughs> <laughs> nah, that's too. Well, if too you were stylish. a big Buckeye fan, <laughs> you know, it's kind of crimson. That's you could true. almost get away with that. <laughs> um, all, all, of this, uh, all of these templates then, ultimately, we're going to build an estimate here showing all three options and all three prices. Um, but at this part of the, uh, of the sales cycle, you may be, you know, negotiating price. Uh, and let's say the customer is leaning towards the GAF slate line product, um, but they need a, a discount or a coupon or, you know, they have some uh, final negotiation here and you need to adjust your price. So let's tap on the little I button next to uh, the GAF slate line here. And let's go to the add custom line item. So if for any reason you need to add a discount or a markup, uh, for example, um, O&P, Jason needs a new keyboard. So if you had to add O&P to a job with a 20% markup, it might look something like that. Uh, if you were going to add a 10% uh, discount, you know, you can call it discount. You can call it anything you want uh, as you create the line item here in your estimate. So there's a 10% discount. But what I find more people using is just the regular item. And they'll call it, um, maybe they offer a coupon in the Sunday paper or something like that. And uh, let's say the final price we're trying to get to here is uh, uh, 18200 even. So I'm going to make the final price $782.05, uh, the discounted price that is. So when I tap on save, it's going to subtract that amount from my total, and I've achieved my 18200 my final negotiated price with the customer. And I'm going to leave this one highlighted uh, so that it will automatically load into my contract here that I'm going to show you on the next screen. So let's jump back down to documents. Did I miss anything on the, on the estimating side? No, I think that was pretty thorough. <laughs> <laughs> Let's generate an uh, estimate here. We're just going to tap on Generate New and create a PDF of those uh, templates that we just threw in there. Uh, and uh, we'll see what this good, better, best, or better, best designer looks like. So you get, uh, of course, the three, uh, the three options here on the top. Um, and then, again, imagine that uh, your logo and company information populates on the top here. Uh, and this, uh, this is customizable as well. At the moment, we've got uh, our line item quantities and uh, line item totals showing on our estimates. 
uh, you do have the option to turn those off. So all the customer will see is the line item description. So they'll see those lines, those, uh, uh, you know, remove and dispose shingle and your weather watch, ice and water shield, things like that. Uh, and as we scroll down, you'll notice that uh, we have this coupon uh, that uh, has populated that we've negotiated the price with our customer. Yep, and the skylights, um, since we did have a replace uh, skylight, in this demo office, we put skylights in a separate trade category, like we would with windows and doors, or like we would with gutters. Um, or siding, yep. insulation. Yep, absolutely, and so it's going to separate out the specifications for different trades uh, into different categories so that it's not mixing them together. You wouldn't want to see, you know, remove and dispose architectural shingles, and then have a siding product right next to that. It just wouldn't make sense to uh, the contractor or the customer. And then, of course, the sharing for every document works the same way. You just tap it here in the upper right-hand corner. Now, we, uh, we had said that the, the customer in this hypothetical was going to go with the slate line, so we left that one highlighted. Now, let's just go ahead and open up the signable version of the contract. Pause while the documents <laughs> load. No, actually, our internet is flying today, uh, which means the documents are loading really fast, you know, two or three spins. Um, these terms and conditions here, everything below the price, this is all customizable and formatable uh, using um, HTML styling. Uh, what that really means is that most of our customers will email us their contract and we'll set it up <laughs> for you. <laughs> Katrina and, uh, and Jeremy both do a great job in using HTML to stylize contracts for our customers. So if you have terms and conditions and contract language that you want to be a part of your RoofSnap contract, uh, just send it to us. Please, it needs to be a PDF that can be um, copied and pasted from. Yes, yeah. please. <laughs> but we can tap here and take a signature from, I'm not going to use a real signature, but uh, take a signature there from the, uh, the homeowner. Tap on save, and it's going to drop that signature. I'm going to have you sign it from now on. <laughs> Probably should. <laughs> Prettier handwriting here. Uh, but it's saving that, uh, that signature, and when it's done generating the signed PDF, uh, we'll hop back into documents here, and uh, let's hop into that PDF of the signed contract. Another, uh, another PDF document here that we can uh, manage within RoofSnap, uh, but this one has the signature with uh, embedded in the document with the date stamp, uh, and then, of course, our terms of the agreement are here on the second page. All of the specifications, quantities uh, with each line item as well. But what most of our customers really notice here is how the shingle shows up with the color that was selected on the top of every contract. Uh, so I don't know if you've ever had a crew install the wrong color. Uh, I know I have. Uh, when, I, when I worked in residential roofing, uh, one of my crews put on the wrong color. And we had to give them a really big discount. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is just one of the things that, uh, that should minimize that as a possibility, but also just makes a nice presentation document for the homeowner to see the color uh, and the product that they'll have installed on their roof. Uh, now, there are many, many more documents that we could go through. Um, the, the last one I want to show you before we end things today here uh, is the material order sheet because if anything in RoofSnap saves you time, it's the material order sheet. Turning a, an estimate, a takeoff, uh, you know, measurements, turning those into products, you know, dividing your uh, uh, number of squares into bundles and your linear foot of hip and ridge and starter into bundles, you know, your coverage for your nails and, and all of those things. You know, most of you probably have Excel spreadsheets that ease your pain a little bit, but you still have to create a material order sheet. Well, RoofSnap, because it's calculating all of that stuff on the back end, can instantaneously generate your material order sheet the estimate from the project that we've just created here. And it's going to turn 
your measurements into bundles, into rolls, into boxes. Uh, total up all of your accessories uh, and so forth. Most of our customers will, um, you know, email this document directly to the house in order to fulfill an, an order. In order to fulfill an order. <laughs> I need a little more coffee today, I think. <clears throat> it's just hard to talk. My throat is so dry. Uh, you know, a few more documents here that uh, we'd love for you guys to take a look at. Uh, but ultimately, I think this is the point in time where we hop over to, um, let's see, let's hop back into uh, our managed materials, which takes us right to roofsnap.com. And I'm going to go to our home screen on Roofsnap. To uh, show you that you know we give everyone the first two weeks for free. We don't want anybody to buy without trying, and just you know we want everybody to use RoofSnap because it's a good fit because it's helping them make more money. Uh, of course, you know we we like uh, you know we we like to make some money too. Um, but you'll you'll find trial, uh, you know whether or not it's going to be a good fit for you uh, as long as. Uh, you know, as long as you understand how the software works and if you have any questions, you know, if you get stuck along the way, give us a call. Uh, our phone number is 877. <laughs> yep. Go ahead, 766-3762. It's 877-ROOFSNAP with no P. Yep. And <laughs> if you're by any chance, uh, you know, in Ohio, uh, you are more than welcome to come and pop in and uh, pay us a visit here. We will uh, train on site uh, at no charge. Uh, we're in the Easton area uh, in Columbus, uh, so feel free to call us and schedule some time to come in. Uh, if it's later in the afternoon, uh, you know we will uh, maybe shoot a game of pool, uh, maybe even have a beer. <laughs> if you're lucky, it's not unheard of. <laughs> if you are not in this neck of the woods, uh, we do, uh, like Jason mentioned, uh, love to make sure that uh, that you're taken care of. So please give us a call, shoot us an email, um, and you know the purpose of these live demos is to make sure that uh, we go over some of the functionality, so you know all the things that RoofSnap is capable of. Absolutely. And if you have any questions about our pricing model, it is subscription based. Um, this little video here kind of talks about the difference between RoofSnap as a software and a Sketchos service that we provide, but only to our subscription customers. The pricing breakdown is based on the number of users, but also based on the duration of the subscription. So if you just want to go one month at a time, there's only one price, $99 per month per user. But if you want to go one year at a time, and most uh, you know most of our customers will go a couple months at the ninety-nine dollars per month per user, and then make that decision to go with a uh, a yearly commitment. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have the two users, five users, and ten users. Uh, a sketch version of the software versus Max, which is full functionality. And if you want to see the specifics about what's provided for just the sketch only, or the full Max version. You can uh, read through those plan features there. Always feel free to jump in on any of our live demos if you want to catch more info or check out our YouTube channel, which has uh, all of our videos that we've done recorded and saved there for your reference. And the last thing we'll touch on here before we go is the Sketchos. So it's our sketch ordering service. Again, for subscribers only, you must have a credit card on file. Um, this is an additional uh, per project price. But we have what's called the half snap and the full snap. Uh, so if you just need roofing squares, uh, so we could outline the roof with the predominant pitch, that's going to give you uh, more or less an accurate uh, square count on that roof. Uh, the full snap is all of the lines drawn, all of the pitches, all of the labels, and the pricing breaks down as such. So the half snap is just $9, any size, any roof. And the full snap is based on per square pricing. Uh, if it's over 80 squares, uh, give us a call. If it's a large commercial building, um, flat roof, for example, just a giant rectangle, definitely give us a call because the way we price out stuff like that is, uh, um, you know, if it's easy, it's $9. It doesn't matter if it's 300 squares, if it's easy. Uh, and we'll just look at it on the, uh, on the aerial imagery, uh, you know, near map or something like that and take a look at it. 
so yeah, just uh, call for pricing on anything that is an atypical non-residential steep slope building. Anything else, Katrina? Mm, no, I think we went over pretty much everything. So, Great. Uh, well, if you uh, joined us today um, and you made it through the whole hour, <laughs> thanks so much for uh, you know watching and listening to everything that we have uh, you know to provide for you here. Um, please uh, sign up. Sign up for our two-week trial. Uh, let us know what you think. Um, we're always changing, making improvements, uh, trying to better the software. Uh, so we're open to your suggestions, and uh, you know, please leave any comments on this video as uh, as you might uh, have any questions for us, and we'll get back to you via email or call us. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. Yep, thanks so much. You guys have a great day.